Hi, thank you for listening today. It's Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com, also blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel, where you'll see where you're going to see 50 plus interviews with independent third party candidates who are on the ballots and who are the only alternate option besides a Republican and Democrat. And today we have with us Joshua Trumbull, Libertarian, running for Attorney General in the state of Washington and uh, this year, 2016. And actually, I see Josh is calling in, and um, so we'll bring him right in, actually, and uh, let me just give a brief introduction here. Um, and now his website is Trumbull. 4ag.com. That's T R U M B U L L, the number 4 A G, which stands for Attorney General.com. And Josh, uh, good good afternoon. How is it going today? Hey, it's going great. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. All right. Well, it's uh, wonderful to do these interviews and let people know their options out there. Um, we're an independent media organization. We believe if a candidate you know, has gathered enough signatures to be on the ballot and has a statistical chance to win, um, then responsible media will equally cover them and have them in the debates. Now, your situation is you're running for the attorney general in Washington and you're on the ballot with against a Democrat. So usually I'm used to seeing like a Republican Democrat or Republican Democrat and some third party or independent. But uh, in the state of Washington, um, if you could explain that to folks, it's just you versus a Democrat. Um, and how did that happen? So they have your uh, people in Washington can vote this November 8th between you, a libertarian versus, um, you know, status quo Democrat Party candidates. Sure. So the way it works in Washington is we have what they call a top two primary. Uh, so before the primary, uh, pretty much anybody who wants to run can file and run. And then the top two vote getters get to move on to the general election. And this year... It turned out that uh, Mr. Ferguson uh, chose to run for re-election, and I chose to run and challenge him as a libertarian, and nobody else filed. So top two primary, there was only two people running, so now we have uh, you know, the final two in the general election. Now with this top two primary system, and I think a few other states like California and maybe one or two other states also apply this in their election system, not everyone might be familiar with it, but that's exactly how it works. I mean, I guess there's pros and cons, but one of the pros is that um, you should be getting a lot more media attention and attention now because it's just the two of you head to head uh, running for attorney general. Do you think that's the case? Yeah, I've never ran for an office before, so I don't have any uh, personal experience to compare it to, but uh, we have been going uh, and meeting with the newspapers, the editorial boards, giving interviews, uh, you know, and it's it's him and I because that's that's who's running and that's the uh, different points of view on things. And so I feel that we're getting covered. Um, I'm certainly being included in uh, editorial boards and uh, and comments on important issues. So it's good to have both sides of uh, – you know, multiple points of view out there rather than just uh, one or, you know, one or what I'd call the standard two, which is, you know, Republican and Democrat. Yeah, there isn't a lot of other um, people in other parties holding a lot of other offices. I mean, I don't know the exact statistics, but probably I would guess 99.9 percent of all elected offices in the entire country, probably for the last hundred years or so, have been just all Republicans and Democrats. I mean, there's a few little independents and third party candidates here and there, but I mean, um, maybe some more competition will happen in the future. And, uh, and there's always someone usually running. So um, I think Washington um, is a, uh, I don't know, it's more of an independent purple, maybe liberal state, and, and you're running as a libertarian and you're running against a Democrat attorney general. Um, and I think actually, you know, it'd be real interesting having a libertarian as a um, uh, attorney general. I mean, that actually might be an ideal position. Um, now, you're your own individual as well. Not all libertarians are the same. So I was looking at your website and you specifically had here on here, um, you know, some uh, links to individual rights as kind of a, an issue, um, breaking up the two party system and people before corporations. And so uh, 
you know, that's what you're advertising out there as um, uh, your, I guess you could call it your platform. Um, if you could go into individual rights and, and what you would advocate as attorney general and maybe um, also some of your um, experience as an attorney. Sure. Yeah. The, the two big issues, I mean, I guess maybe it's one big issue, but the, I think that the foundation of um, the federal government, the foundation of the state government is certainly the protection of individual rights. Uh, you know, we have fundamental rights that they are not given to us by the government. They are uh, inherent in our humanity and the government has been established to protect those rights. And I, I am fundamentally opposed to removing rights from people by, you know, the simple majority of, a, of another group. Uh, I think anytime, you know, different parties, different people's philosophies, oftentimes the answer to anything is, well, let's regulate more, let's take away rights. That will make us safer or nicer or better somehow, where I think that's removing an essential part of our humanity. People need to be able to be free. We need to be able to live uh, according to our own conscience. And, you know, inherent in the freedom and the fundamental rights that we possess, we have to choose to use our rights. Um, you know, and this is a whole other issue we could talk about, but in a, in a quote-unquote moral way. So just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you can use it in any way you want. So that's, that's my fundamental principle of government is that it is there to protect individual rights, not to, not to try to remove them or restrict them or regulate them and, and tell people how to, how to act, how to believe and what to do. Yeah, and we can look at, um, you know, examples in history like, um, you know, during World War II, the detention camps that some Japanese Americans encountered and some other groups. And uh, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of examples, but as a republic, we all have those individual rights, right? And um, what about um, now, I assume you're running as attorney gen for attorney general. Um, uh, it, it, what, what, what about your experience that makes you, um, uh, you know, a qualified candidate for this position? Yeah. So I can, I'll talk about my legal uh, background and this is the probably I'd say the reason I ran. Um, and now that I've been involved in the process, I have, you know, some other points that I think are important for people to hear. But the reason I ran is, you know, like most of us, I, I followed the, you know, what they call it the Great Recession, the economic collapse, all that, all, you know, all those terms to describe, you know, 2008, 2009, uh, when a lot of the fraud and deception of the financial industry came out uh, and the harm that it caused. And then that led to, uh, you know, essentially a, a crisis regarding foreclosures. Um, and there was a lot made about that for several years. And I started representing uh, individuals uh, against defending or and or uh, affirmatively suing as plaintiffs uh, the financial industry in about 2012 because I did not like what was going on. It, it was um, these this essentially kind of this corrupt block of an industry that that got caught breaking laws and instead of owning up to, to that and trying to remedy the harm they had caused the community they instead decided to push forward and try to take people's homes whether they uh, were entitled to those homes whether they needed to create you know there's lots of reporting out there about creation of false documents um, all kinds of fraud, things like that. And so I, I got into helping people um, either trying to resolve issues with, you know, a lot of people call it the bank, but oftentimes it's a, it's a mortgage servicer. Um, sometimes things as simple as the homeowner had made a payment and it wasn't credited. And instead of fixing that mistake, the servicer presses forward to foreclosure. Uh, sometimes Oftentimes, I'm sure that it, lots of people have heard about the, you know, during that time period, you, you would call in and say, hey, I've heard about this thing called the mortgage modification. Uh, the president's talking about it. And it's all over the news. And 
what the servicers would tell people oftentimes was, well, if you miss three payments, uh, we can get you a mortgage modification. And so uh, the homeowner being in a position of vulnerability, they didn't know all the information. They trusted that servicer. And that essentially led to years of strife and struggle and oftentimes resulted in their foreclosure. And so I've been, I've been helping people through this since 2012. And our state's attorney general's office is not addressing this issue. They're not protecting the community from, in my opinion, the world's biggest fraud. Um, this is not simply an issue of, well, that person couldn't pay their bills, so they deserve to lose their house. This is an issue of, it, it's immensely more complicated than that. Um, and it's harming everybody. It harms the community. There's studies out there that show that if your neighbor's house gets foreclosed on, it can affect your health. You, you may be like, more likely to have a heart attack. Uh, it breaks up marriages. It breaks up families. Uh, it hurts our schools. It hurts, um, you know, it hurts the community, the neighborhood. And, you know, most importantly, or it, these are all important, but most importantly, there's children involved here. And you have a whole generation of children that are growing up in this, uh, you know, essentially purgatory of are we going to be living here? Are we not going to be living here? Mom and dad are upset. Uh, and that's going to have lasting effects. And so, you know, individual homeowners are outgunned and outbudgeted and, and they get outspent in litigation. And it's very difficult to win. And when you, when you do win for a homeowner, I just don't feel that the amount of, you know, what you'd call you know, damages or if you wanted to view it as a penalty, it's not enough to change the behavior of the industry. The, the only way that we're going to change the behavior and protect the community at large is to have the Washington Attorney General's Office address this issue and protect the people. Well, wow. yeah, it definitely affects has affected everyone across the board, and that's an issue definitely um, you could gather consensus on, and um, yeah, a lot of heartbreaking stories regarding, you know, the home crisis of 2008, the Great Recession, and so good for you, uh, Joshua. That's um, great to hear someone advocating for the people, and um, and so actually, and let me ask you a question here about. Um, so I, I, I assume, and I might be wrong on this, but Washington is kind of a um, known as a maybe a like I said a liberal state. Maybe um, I'm sure there's parts that are independent and conservative, but so you're running statewide, um, giving an option out there, something that's different than the status quo. What would you say to alleviate the concerns of people that might have never uh, voted for a libertarian or who might lean more liberal? Um, and uh, so what would be your appeal in a broader sense to, um, you, you know, that would alleviate certain concerns and uh, that would give people confidence that you're the best choice for this position this year? Sure. Yeah, you know, anytime that there's uh, something new, uh, people can react with, with an uncomfortable feeling. And, in, you know, this case, it's, it's the fact that, I, you know, behind my name, I don't have the R or a D. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a person that cares about the community. I care about getting dialogue. I, I want to have dialogue. We need, our, our society needs to get dialogue going so that we can come up with good ideas and we can, um, we can reach consensus on things. Um, I, I don't think that the Attorney General's office is an office that should be, um, you know, I, I don't know if pushing is the right word, but, but that should be, I'll use it, I guess, pushing a partisan agenda I think, you know, that, that legislators can do that. Uh, but, but the Attorney General's Office should use the limited resources to, to protect the greatest number of people um, from the greatest harm. And like I said, in that case, I believe that is the financial industry for the last 10 years. Um, and, you know, my experience in that is pretty extensive. I've been involved in, in many cases. I've I've won cases. I've been in the appellate court. I've done trials. Um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty well versed in that area. Uh, as far as you know, running the office, I I've been involved in uh, you know my own couple businesses. I've I've worked for larger entities. I have a um, 
a degree, an undergraduate degree from the University of Washington in business management, and I also hold a master's degree from Seattle University uh, in business administration where I focused in uh, leadership and management again. And, you know, that's in addition to my law degree, allows me to practice law and help people. So, you know, I'm, I'm not probably the typical politician. I'm, I'm out here speaking from my heart, telling issues that I think are important. Uh, hopefully, the community agrees with me. You know, I don't think protecting people from, from fraud and corruption is a partisan issue. I think that no matter what side of anything, I think we would all agree that that's a, that's a good thing to do. Um, I'm not saying that I'm anti-corporation or an anti-profit. I think that our country needs business and we need profit, you know. Um, but I am against those things when you're not playing by the rules and you're harming other people. So I have a, a pretty lengthy history in this area. There's, there's cases out there that are, that are public record um, that people can research, and I'm always available to, to share more if people have any concerns. But I think that uh, having a libertarian as attorney general is, is what this state needs. And I'm going to tell people what I feel in my heart. And if they like that, they can vote for me. And if not, I love discussing things with people. And uh, I think that's the key to, to a great society. Great, great. Thank you, Joshua. And let me just read, if you don't mind, I'm going to read one paragraph off your website here. Corporations business provides benefits for the people of Washington, whether they're small family business or large corporations. But there are times when businesses can cause harm to the people of Washington it is the attorney general's job to make sure that these businesses are held responsible and to protect people from reoccurring problems. Sometimes settlements result in nothing more than a press release and a slap on the wrist to big corporations because the consequences are so little. They write this off as a cost of doing business. Um, uh, and uh, no harmful behavior should ever be profitable. And um, so that's uh, uh, kind of ties into that. And um, now, and let me ask you this: um, Is uh, what? Um, who's some of your favorite past or present people, elected or not? That's an interesting question. I, um, do I need to have met them, or just kind of no. theoretically? Th- theoretically, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I have great respect for a lot of the founders. Um, I think that they all did did great things, whether they were, you know, advocating for a strong federal government or a weak federal government, you know, states' rights, things like that. Uh, if you read a lot of their writings, um, they really did think through stuff, and they had open debates. You know, if you, if you read the accounts of it, oftentimes they were heated, and that, you know, they ended up calling people names and things like that. But if you think back to the courage it took to essentially take some of the, you know, recent philosophical writings about self-government when it really had never been done in the history of the world and come up with a framework, um, a, you know, and, and announce to the greatest power on earth that, hey, you know, we're going to be free now and we're going we're gonna to govern ourselves um, and be willing to sacrifice what they had um, I think that's p- pretty impressive. Not not that every decision they all made was I agree with, but just kind of overall, a lot of the you know the founders and the first presidents and and the Supreme Court justices and things like that. Uh, I, I admire a lot of them. I mean, I don't I don't have specific names that, you know off the top of my head. I think we all kind of know, you know, who kind of who did what back then. But I certainly have a lot of admiration for for those people. Um, after having run for office now, I actually I've never gotten to meet uh, Ron Paul, but I certainly think that all of his years of uh, service out there representing people of his district, oftentimes uh, throughout you know the 30 or so years he was in office, it kind of ebbed and flowed. Sometimes people agreed with him, sometimes people didn't, but he really held um, and he spoke what he believed and and let people decide for themselves. I think that's, um, I think that's very admirable quality to have. Yeah, I mean Ron Paul, a Congress, a former Congress, congressman from Texas, who also later ran as president and and had prior to that, um, 
Yeah, I think it's admirable when people run for office to serve the people, you know, when they're doing it for the right reasons. I mean, you're really putting yourself out there and uh, giving people another option for sure. Um, so do you have any upcoming events or, um, you, you know, media events or public events um, for, you know, in the remainder of this campaign coming up soon? Yeah, we do. We have, so uh, tomorrow night, I'm actually uh, appearing on a segment. Uh, it's TV on TVW. It's our, our you know, statewide um, like public TV studio down in Olympia. I am appearing on a segment at seven o'clock uh, with the incumbent. We had about, it's about a nine or 10 minute appearance where we kind of debate the issues a little bit. Uh, Thursday, I'm appearing let's look at my calendar here at about three twenty five on the um on the radio with uh Todd Herman in Seattle. Uh five PM that same day I am going to be attending the ethnic media candidate forum slash meet and greet. Uh, and then rolling into next week, Monday on the twenty sixth, I'm gonna be meeting with the Colombian. It's it's a newspaper uh kind of in the south of the state. On the 29th, we're going to be meeting with the Seattle Times. And then we just have some events uh, scheduled throughout October, uh, kind of, you know, different weekdays, things like that. Still scheduling additional events kind of as we go. So um, trying to get trying to get out there, trying to meet as many people as I can. Uh, last night, I also got to go meet some great people on the Kitsap Peninsula. So uh, definitely putting stuff out there, getting active on the, on the, the Internet and the website, on Facebook. So... It's it's really great. Yeah, again, I know you mentioned this earlier, but, um, you know, Attorney General seems like it has the potential to be a very non-divisive type of uh, race for you. I mean, if there's anything that I could see people being less hesitant to giving a libertarian a try for uh, office is um, – is attorney general. Um, and, uh, have you gotten any outreach or any, you know, support from like Democrats and other liberal parties, you know, um, and people across, you know, and Republicans and independents, um, you know, the full political spectrum. What do you say? Yeah. I mean, the people that I talk to, uh, oftentimes it's great. We, you know, we engage in discussion and, and we talk and they, they say, Hey, you know, I, I like what you stand for and I'm going to vote for you. And then they realize, oh, I didn't ask what party you're in. And then I say, hey, I'm running as a libertarian, and here's why. And, and they really like that. So just in my travels and my meetings, I've, I've met many, uh, you know, many individual Democrats who, who like what I have, you know, my, like my uh, position on, on protecting the community from the financial industry and the fraud they've been, uh, you know, using to, to make profit over people. Um, the Republicans, again, like you were saying, since I don't have an R after my name, some of them are a little bit leery, but, you know, sit down and talk to them and, and we find out where we agree, where we, if we, if we disagree, you know, on, on most issues, it seems like a lot of people, no matter what party they're in it, it, it really does seem like Americans agree on most things. Uh, just unfortunately, when, when the political time comes around, we have to focus on, on the things that we don't agree on. And then people forget, you know, the rest of the time that, hey, there are a lot of things that we, that we all want and we should work together to achieve them. So, uh, you know, as far as uh, the, the actual parties themselves, um, I think that there are some Republican uh, parties uh, state in the state, uh, you know, whether they're uh, countywide or, you know, local like that, that, that are going to probably come out and endorse me. We've been talking with them. I don't know about, you know, a Democrat uh, caucus or anything like that endorsing me because they have a Democrat in the race. But on an individual level, I've spoken with many Democrats that are that are excited and are, have said that they'll be supporting me. Great, great. And um, now just uh, just two final things. I mean, we're just um, going back to some of your favorite people, I, you know, find on your website a quote from uh, John Adams, another one from Frederick Douglass. But is there any other... Um, local issues that, that we haven't touched on uh, that you'd like to, uh, ex, you know, ex, um, expand on in the final couple minutes here. Um, and uh, and I, I don't know if it's pretty much 
uh, a past thing now. I know recently Washington passed the um, the legalization of uh, recreational uh, cannabis or, or marijuana. And um, you think there could be any cases coming up in, in that that could be important for the future and any other issues that you want to touch on? This will be the final question. Thanks, Joshua. Sure, yeah. So I'll start with the, the last thing you asked about the legalization of, of cannabis, and then I can actually have two uh, important issues that, I, that I'd like to get people aware of uh, as we wrap up. So uh, the big issue regarding the legalization of the cannabis in the state uh, has to do with, with preemption and whether the local uh, municipalities, whether they're cities or counties, can ban the sale of cannabis in their jurisdiction. Um, a lot of people believed that because it was a statewide initiative that local governments wouldn't be able to interfere with the, the sale of that. Uh, Attorney General Ferguson came out, uh, I, I can't remember when, maybe a year ago or a little bit more than a year ago with a legal opinion from the office that basically said the way that the, the initiative was written uh, it does not have expressed language that preempts um, a local municipality's decision whether to allow the sale or not. That got a lot of people upset. There's been some cases, I'm, I believe maybe there's five or six at the superior court level, which is what we call our, our first court. You go to the trial court. Uh, so far, all the judges have agreed with the attorney general's position that local uh, municipalities can ban the sale of cannabis. Um, I know that a lot of people are upset about that. My my position on that is that there is, I, I read the statute, I didn't see any express language that would prohibit the preemption. So if people want to take that issue, um, they can write the legislature or uh, we have a great initi- you know, initiative process here. We could We could amend the statute with an initiative. That brings up other issues regarding that, that would probably take the case to the United States Supreme Court. Um, so, you know, depending on, on which policy side you, you want to push, there's, there's a lot that can happen with that seemingly small issue. Um, it could affect the entire country. Um, so regarding kind of the last two issues that, I, that I've been talking about and that I care a lot about is, you know, as a libertarian, I, I believe that government is formed to protect individual liberties. Uh, recently, our, our attorney general came out with a proposal to ban assault. Uh, I believe he called it assault weapons and magazines that have a capacity more than 10 rounds. Uh, there is nothing written down. He, he, there's no bill for anybody to look at. It's it's pretty vague uh, at this point and seemingly arbitrary. Um, so you know, I, I'm against restricting individual freedoms. Uh, I think, I can't remember who it was that said, you know, if you start giving up freedoms uh, in search of safety, you're going to end up with neither. So rather than restrict people's freedoms uh, in trying to get a society that way you feel comfortable in and is safe and works, I think we should address uh, underlying issues. Uh, if, it's, if it's violence we're trying to address, we should figure out the cause of violence. We shouldn't start restricting people's, people's liberties. And then the last issue that is uh, very important to me, uh, I'm located up, I work in Arlington, and uh, about two years ago there was that massive Oso landslide um, that the country heard about. Um, and so the people that were affected by that brought a suit against the state. And the Attorney General's office is defending the state. Uh, that's what his job is. It hired experts. And at this point, I believe it's paid approximately three and a half million dollars to those experts for their opinions. And about three weeks ago, uh, it came to light that the state's experts had agreed to uh, destroy evidence as they went along in the case. And that evidence was essentially their emails and their opinions. Um, so instead of turning over the evidence to the plaintiffs and their attorneys, the, the experts agreed that they would destroy the evidence. And present at the meeting was an assistant attorney general, uh, 
uh, who did not stand up and say, nope, we have to preserve this. Uh, plaintiffs likely have a right to see it. So that has, has come out recently. Um, and then there was an article in the Everett Herald that relates to a special assistant attorney general who is brought in for this case. And apparently that attorney has been tied to evidence destruction in the past when he was representing municipalities. Uh, and the article reports that he was recently uh, sanctioned by the court in the amount of approximately $27,000. Um, and from what uh, the people up here understand, what I've been able to glean, that attorney has now been uh, put in charge of the upcoming trial and the remainder of the litigation. So I, th I think that that's a huge uh, appearance of a conflict, um, of an ethical issue, uh, you know, not, not condemning anybody, but um, I think that the office needs to make sure to avoid any appearances of ethical issues when, uh, when it's defending the state, because essentially the office owes a duty to the citizens and to the state, which is the citizens. And so uh, that's, that's a very big concern that I have and that the people uh, up in this area have. And it should be a concern for all the people that are listening today. Yeah, well, thank you definitely for bringing that to our attention in more detail here, and we do appreciate that. Well, Joshua, good luck in um, your campaign, and uh, and people can find out more at Trumbull, T-R-U-M-B-U-L-L, the number 4, A-G, attorneygeneral.com, uh, Trumbull4AG.com. And, um, well, good luck to you, sir. It's been a pleasure, and thank you for taking the time to um, – you know, let our audience hear uh, a choice that's going to be available for the state of Washington. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. And we also have a uh, campaign Facebook page that I'm trying to update and let people uh, be able to follow activity and ask questions and, and be able to interact on there. So if people, if people want more information, they can go there as well. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, I hope you have a good rest of the afternoon. Thanks so much, Joshua. Thank you.